Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world, and as you can see, I have been busy working on some of the details to the house that I promised a thousand years ago. I have done most of the windows, in fact, I want to say all of the windows except for the ones on the tower, with the granite dry stone trim, and the walnut framing, and windowsills, and then on any of the windows that aren't particularly close to a roof, I put this little awning over them. And then I finally got around to figuring out what I wanted to do with the door. I don't think I'm quite finished yet. In fact, I might want to just finish this up like this a bit. Yeah, let's do this. That looks a bit better. A little less disconnected there. We finally have a doorway befitting the Master of Plaster. You also may have noticed in the last episode I had already done this section here and I put these flowers in pots, which I think add a nice splash of color. And we are coming a few days after the last episode, and I have been busy. I have turned all of those iron blooms into iron ingots, and we currently have 75 iron ingots. And that's even after I made a whole second set of tools, but no second anvil. We saw just the one. I wasn't ready to tackle that one again yet. But we started running low on fuel. We can still use brown coal for forging, but we can't use it for smelting. And I didn't want to dig into the anthracite coal for smelting, so I'm busy deforesting the forest back there. As you can see, the tree line's been cut back way far, and I have been chopping firewood like a madman. And I have been at work with a few other chores. I removed all of the weird limestone gravel that was back here and put grass in. I've been chopping trees. I have been making food. I had a temporal storm. We have another death. And that brings us to today's topic. I wanted to focus on something a little different, a little more build focused, a little around the house kind of thing. And I wanted to start fleshing out some of this area over here. And yes, you'll notice that the clay firing area has once again been removed. I swear it's going to stay gone this time, I swear. But I wanted to focus on this little area back here before all the trees regrow, because I did replant all the maples there. But I thought it was time to do a couple things. One, I wanted to expand our apiary into the second lot we had marked out. I want to get started on some of the path building that I have planned for around the area. And then I remembered that we need to take some time to remember our fallen heroes, the lives of our past selves who died in the name of advancement and iron ingots and temporal gears. And I wanted to build a little cemetery over here, just a fun little thing, to commemorate our deaths and to record them going forward so that we can have look at them and learn from our mistakes and have a little cemetery out back of our little farmstead here. So, that is the goal of today's episode. You know what I'm going to say. Let's get to it. So the first process that I want to tackle is definitely the bees, because we already have a template for our build right here, and I think it will be a simple matter to just copy this over here. And I do want to make a few slight adjustments to our overall design, because as much as I enjoy the purple lupins here, they are quite samey, so I'd like to sort of mix it up just a little bit and bring in a different splash of color and copy that over here. So let's just get this built in and we'll get our bees nice and happy.
there we now have our two matching apiaries. This one should fill with bees in a few days after these guys have some time to swarm. Of course, they'll need to swarm into their own scouts first, and then they should be able to migrate over here. I think this is close enough. If not, we can just scoot one of these full ones over here. It won't be a problem. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to get a start. Not a finish, but definitely a start on the kind of walkways I want to have around our little home here. Because we've been just walking on the grass and stopping at flat and turning in mud with our feet. And I'm tired of tracking mud into our house. And I'm tired of having to have the groundskeeper fix all the bare patches of yard after I've walked through a thousand times carrying the 7,000th load of wood over to the charcoal pit. Hem, hem. So I was thinking of laying down a little bit of path or something over here just to test it out first and see what I think, maybe see what you guys think before we expand it to other areas of our farmstead here. And then we will run this path maybe over here and I may shrink it a bit right in here. We'll see. I don't know. But I do want to have a path that comes over to our little cemetery that we're going to have in a minute. Now, I'll be honest, I have put some thought into this, but I haven't really tested this out. And I don't know how it's going to actually look alongside all of the features that we have in our home here. So, let's give this a whirl, and if we hate it, we rip it out. No big deal. I'm going to start by taking out this dirt, and there we go. That mysterious floating flower always gets me. I was thinking that limestone gravel that I liberated from behind the blacksmith might look pretty good. It's sort of a nice bright color that brings some of the houses white tones, pale tones, down to the ground around us. You know, I don't hate it. I don't know how it's going to look at scale, like if we start using this everywhere, and maybe we'll use some variation to change it up here and there, maybe for different portions of our grounds here, but I kind of like it. It's very boulevardy, if that's a word. So, yeah, I think I kind of like this. I want to run this, like, down here, come by our old house, which is now the in-law suite. I haven't done the interior yet. Take out this pond here, probably. Maybe run a bridge over it, but I'm leaning toward taking it out. And then having it meet up with our driveway over here. And we could run this right up here, like so. Yes. Yes, I am liking this more and more as I play with it. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I say let's go for it. I'm not going to get it all in today, but I'm definitely going to get a start on it. And I might just do this one road here that goes over to the chicken coop and around here. Maybe meet it up with this staircase here. We'll see. I'm going to get this in, and then we're going to go and look at our cemetery, where we are going to honor our fallen heroes the way they deserve. I mean, we haven't had our bodies buried for, what, two years now? I think our first death was almost two years ago. Actually, two years and four days ago, I think. So yeah, I'm going to get this walkway in, and then I'll bring you back, and we will focus on our main build of the day. Okay, everyone. I have been hard at work getting this road in, as well as a few more decorations. I put our loam planters out here, and I replaced the grass block that was here with a piece of the limestone gravel, and put in a red and purple lupin just for more color splash. So let's take a look at where this road goes. I have our road running from our house out here to our driveway, eventually probably out down that way somewhere. I think I'll leave this sort of open here for the time being. And this just goes all the way down here. And it has a little branch off to our OG house. Oh, I didn't do that one. You didn't see that. And then we come over here, 
over to our vineyard, and over to our 1B area, over to our chickens, and hmm, hello guys, and then it's going to go out this way, and I'll make a stop here, and then it'll continue on down past our Cooper's Reeds, and over to our new area here. So, the cemetery. Let's talk materials and design. I want to build... Ooh. Hey, buddy. As I was saying, I want to build with some andesite. So, I wanted to come here to some place where we know there's some andesite to be found. And I wanted to mine out a little bit of it. And I'm going to do just that by going right down here. And if that's the plan, I'm sticking to it. So, I'm going to get digging, and I brought along both of our mining bags, so I can bring back plenty of stone of all kinds. And I'm going to get some andesite to build with. Some nice blue stone. Okay, and we are back from our andesite mining trip. That didn't take as long as I thought it would, because, one, iron pickaxe. And two, iron pickaxe. So I'm going to go ahead and start unloading our stuff here. We got this much andesite, so we got two full stacks and change of relieved stone, a whole ton of andesite stones, which I'm going to turn into path blocks with some dirt, probably. And I found a tiny little zinc deposit, so I picked up some sphalerite and a few samples. So I'm going to get this put away, and then our focus is going to be on the gorgeous block we're about to witness for the first time, right here, like this. Look at that. Look at that nice sky blue block. This will go nicely, I think, with some granite cobblestone and or some granite stone brick as a nice accent piece. So. I'm going to get this put away, and we'll get started on the cemetery. I think what I want to do here is I want to have room for maybe four rows of graves, or I should say four columns of graves, and maybe just two or three rows. We don't need this to be a huge necropolis. And then at the back, I think maybe back here, we'll have a small mausoleum. A small mausoleum. So I brought with us our trusty dirt blocks, and I think we're going to just sort of hash this out with dirt, and then we'll fill it in with the actual materials. And I will fill in this land here, because I think I'm okay with having the land come up a little bit here, instead of trying to match the apiaries. So we will have a two block wide entrance, and a two block wide path going down to our mausoleum in the back here. I think the mausoleum should be flanked by a pair of trees, maybe some big old walnut trees. So they'll take a while to grow, and I'll come back and chop them down if they end up sort of being too small. So we'll have our walkway, we'll have our path blocks here, we'll have our limestone gravel here. And let's start the first set of graves, say, here. Maybe even one more block back, just there's some walking room. There we go. And our second grave there. And then we'll come here. We'll have our third grave. And then there. So there's our first set of graves. And then we'll have our headstones like that. And then second row of graves, like so. And then we have our mausoleum. So let's put one more block space here. And we'll do this, and we'll do that. No, we'll go back one more. That's better. So this here will be where our mausoleum is. And this will then have a staircase that goes down into the ground where we will have our fallen heroes, our past selves previous lives. And then around this, we'll have a little fence. I'm going to start getting this in 
and I'll bring you back when I have some progress to show. Okay, it has been a day, and here is the start of our cemetery. We have some granite copple skull adorning the entryway. Just in case you weren't already sure where this place was, or what this place was. I have the start of some headstones here. We're going to chisel these down. And I was thinking of chiseling some names in here, but the chisel doesn't get really fine enough for that. So we'll just use signs, and we'll just make sure that this face is solid. And then we have this upside-down staircase on top of some of the limestone gravel, which I'm liking more and more, honestly. And on top of that, we have the aged wooden fence. And then a little slab cap, just to make sure that drifters can't hop up and over this. And then we have each of these graves here. Now these graves are currently empty, but we'll fill them, don't you worry. We first need to dig down a little more, and we need to fit some coffins in here, don't we? Now I'm aware that there are some blocks, the stone sarcophagus. However, it is much harder to put things in the sarcophagus than it is into a wooden trunk, so everyone in this world gets a pine box burial. We're just going to go ahead and plop a couple of these in here. And we will explain who resides in Yon Pine Boxes in a bit. But first, I want to get to the mausoleum, which I want to use some of this nice polished andesite for. I think this would make a great sort of... Yes, a great sort of set of pillars. So we will do some of this stuff on the outside here. And then we will use more of the granite bricks for the walls. Now, I would have rather have used metal doors for this, but I don't feel like committing 24 iron ingots to the cause at the moment. And I know you can find these sometimes at the furniture traders, but I'm not fancying a run up to them right now. So as we get time, as we find some iron doors, maybe for a few gears, we will replace these wooden doors. Let's go ahead and let's get the rest of our mausoleum in here. Now the roof. I didn't think about what to do for the roof. I think I might go with, you know, I might go with the blue clay shingles for the roof. I think I have a few left over. And we'll do a sort of flat roof here with a slight slope up at the center. And that should go nicely with the andesite rock and the granite stone, keeping that sort of cool tone. And that's what we want. We want a cool tone for this because we want the inside of this to be nice and cool and dry. You don't want your bodies hanging out in the sweltering wet heat. So I'm going to go get some of these shingles and we will get those in place. Here we have the start of our little mausoleum. Let's get to the inside, and let's start digging down and getting our stairs in. I was going to do a small spiral staircase, which is probably appropriate, but I also thought of maybe doing a double staircase down and then a split, and then two staircases down into the main area that converge into one. And I think I might end up doing that. So, I guess for the stairs... Let's do something different for the stairs. I'm leaning toward maybe shale brick? Something dark. And I know that in the floor downstairs, I want to use more of the stone path. Or, if not stone path, then maybe something like half slabs. So that we can have it pretty dark down here, but not worry about drifters spawning. So let's get this dug first, and then I'll figure out how I want to handle the stairs.
Well, everyone, we are back, and I've been working pretty hard on this thing. We're going to add some exterior lighting right there, and we will add some interior lighting right up here. We're going to get rid of these torches and just light this up a little bit. We don't want it to be too bright in here. Let's grab you and you, and I'm thinking... That is very dark. And we're going to have a little sort of set of tables here and altars. Now, in our world, we have died five times. And so I have brought five candles in here. And we are going to place them as just vigil on this table. And there. Now that is atmospheric. But we're not done yet because we need to finally lay our bodies to rest. And for that, I have brought, I guess, five of our bodies and ten other people's bodies with us. And so we are going to go and lay these out. These are the last remains we were able to recover from our tragic passings. So, I'm going to lay you to rest here. Brave soldiers. We hardly knew ye. And there we go. But now, we need to mark when and how they died, of course. Our first death in this world, of course, that was from our encounter with that wolf. Our second ancestor. Our second death was in a temporal storm between episodes 8 and 9. I was off screen, unfortunately. Our third ancestor. Unfortunately, what happened to us in November of 1386 is still a mystery because this was before I decided to keep track of deaths and I forgot what happened. So, yep, we died in November. It was off screen. I don't know what happened. Actually, I think only one death so far has been on screen. It was this one. Anyway, ahem, ahem. Back to our solemn remembrance of our ancestors. Our fourth tragic passing was almost a year to the day after our first one. Actually, it was year to the day after our first death. And once again, temporal storm. I got too close to a drifter. Probably a nightmare drifter. Maybe double-headed. Who knows? Maybe we never will. And, oh boy. Let's do you guys here on the end. Our latest and final death happened just before the recording of this episode. A double-headed drifter killed me once again in a temporal storm. I got too greedy. With the ambiance once again returned, I really enjoy having these aged wooden tables here to be our little altar. And we can record up to 12 deaths here. If we get more than 12, um, we'll stop counting, because this was kind of a project and a half. So, yeah, maybe we'll just shuffle some of these off to a different mortal coil and begin replacing some of our signs. But we have room up here for 20 visual candles, so there is that. I just hope we don't have to die that many times. Now, as for our graves outside, which need a trim around the lawn here, we are here to commemorate the passing of our other brethren. Those who have fallen in battle, to starvation, hyenas, explosives. We here honor the passing of the brave Ventarians, whose YouTubes were cut tragically short the brave Papa Cheddar. He went out doing what he loved most, playing with explosives in his living room. And so we bury him with a bomb. Sleep well, fair soldier. To Asgard, tragically, his body was never found. There is still hope, but with heavy hearts, we bury our memories of him with what he loved most. He lived in Copper Mountain, and so he shall rest with the copper. Sleep well, brave soldier. And if you're ever found, well, that will be joyous news indeed. For our next brave soldier, we have some better news. For he was thought lost while fighting against the great beasts of rust in the warrior of mechs. But lo and behold, I have received word he may be returning to the land of the living. So this grave shall lie empty. And this, this is joyous news. And our last named grave here. 
is for GG Beyond, who is still alive, as far as I'm aware. However, they are playing in a hardcore world with a hard one-year duration to their play. So that will come to an end at some point, no matter what. The Reaper comes for us all, my friend. So we will leave this grave also open and empty until such time as we hear word of their passing. Oh, and actually, we will put this empty map, this empty parchment, into Nemo Nemo's grave for future. Because Nemo Nemo hates maps that have things drawn on them, because he doesn't use the map. So, there. <laughs> well, everyone, we are about at the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed the silly romp through our cemetery and some of the goofiness that ensued. You should, by the way, check out all the channels belonging to the people that you see on these gravestones here. If I can pan past this one... Yeah, there we go. Oop. Much better. They all have some pretty cool content, and some of them are still doing Vintage Story. Others are on to bigger and better things, but they all have some pretty cool channels. Go check them out. Before we end the episode, I wanted to take a moment and note that we have just passed the 500 subscriber milestone. This happened as I was recording this episode, so to you it would be, I guess, last week. So I just wanted to give out a heartfelt thanks to all of you who have made that possible and made that happen. And in the next few weeks, I should be getting access to the community tab in YouTube, so I should be able to post updates and other odds and ends to notify you all of goings-on. Anyway, we are now at the end of the episode for real. As always, my name has been Kurazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.